Hello and welcome. We are here today in celebration of Women's History Month with a new show called Women to Woman. I am Amber Ace Cleveland and I'm joined with Maria Isa, Maria Isa, <laughs> Mar crappy. Maria Isa Perez. I don't know how you wanna call it. I like to add my nickname whenever I say my full name. Um, Maria is a Twin Cities legend. That's how I heard you introduced at the Ashley DeBose really? show. Really? I'm a, a legend Twin already? Twin Cities legend. Wow. She is an MC, an actress, a singer, an activist, mm -hmm. a change maker, soon to be a radio talk show host. Yes. You're going to name this show, though. El Movimiento Mix and La Mera Buena 107.5 FM. That's what I meant to say if I could speak Spanish. <laughs> uh, I am Amber Ace Cleveland. I'm the owner of AC Entertainment, the creator of the Hip Hop Festival for the Love, which is based in Lower Town St. Paul. I also own Brims and Tugs Clothing, Remix and Vixens, and I'm soon to be a doctoral candidate at Hamlin University. So we are two very accomplished ladies, still, I would say. <laughs> still accomplishing and still, still accomplishing. moving. And yes, definitely doesn't, doesn't ever stop. No. Can't stop, won't stop. <laughs> Best book ever. Did you ever read that book? Jeff, Jeff, yeah, Jeff Chang? Jeff Chang. Best writer in hip hop. So, he's cool, uh, he's cool. Shout out. Shout out to Jeff Chang, who <laughs> should be watching in St. Paul. I mean, <laughs> does he hang out in St. Paul and write often? Um, but while, while we're meeting today, actually, I mean, we, we hinted to it a little bit. Maria and I are both heavily involved in the Twin Cities hip hop community. Maria is much more uh, international than I am. I would say you're all over the world. I feel like wherever I'm at, you're there too. Oh, you so. That's how you uh, you market yourself well. It's just it takes Shoes. a village. It takes a it takes a movement. It does take a movement, and I know it took a movement for you to get to where you're at. Definitely. And I know it took a more than a movement for me to get to where I was at. And and I have a few questions to go over. And I think this is a good part to talk about family, mm -hmm. a good a good space. Um, so. This the the question I I most cued on when I was reading through this list is what was the definition of femininity, femininity taught to you by the women in your family? The definition of femininity taught to me by my family, the first person that comes to my mind of teaching me uh, is my mother and my grandmother. Mm -hmm. um, the strength of being a woman and obviously recognizing that we are equal mm -hmm. and that we are human and that yes, men are very different, obviously, mm -hmm. women are very different. However, that should not block our expectations of where we'd like to see ourselves in society mm -hmm. and how we would like to be treated by both m men and women. Yeah. So the, the femininity aspect of you know respecting yourself Mm -hmm. Those values were very strongly placed in my mind as a young girl growing up and still reflected on as a, as a woman now, mm -hmm. as um, how, how we can grow, how we can build, and that we are, we are the strength, you know. Everyone yeah. likes to say the man is the, the head of the household, but the man can't go nowhere without the neck. Right, right, and I've heard that say. So. I, what the line I heard was that from an, that Greek movie. My big fat yeah, my Greek big wedding. Fan. It's a great, great quote. The man is the head, but the woman, she's the neck. She yeah. controls where the head goes. Yeah. Yes, yes. Perfect. I yes. know where you're going with that. Indeed. Uh, yeah, I grew up a child of a very strong woman. Um, my mother has always been the head of my household. Yeah. <laughs> same same for you you know i mean but not to say pops doesn't hold it down but right. he is he's a feminist for supporting yeah. my mother and, and i know your father yeah. and i can attest to this <laughs> <laughs> definitely he definitely appreciates women <laughs> always so no i yeah my mother always held our household down she held her household down from a young age her father died at the age of 15 mm. and she ran her family farm until she graduated and paid for everything mm -hmm. so my mother made it very clear to me that a woman is a strong person and I have lots of brothers I have a I have a biological brother but I have lots of men that are considered my brothers in my in my household grew up with nothing but men around me so my mother was the only female influence mm -hmm. that was it but mm -hmm. she was stronger than all of them combined right so right. I, I found it impressive the the question about the femininity to me though was uh, kind of comical my mother was never a very feminine woman She's very strong, very tomboyish. I grew up very tomboyish. I, I know you were an athlete, mm -hmm. just like I, I was, was an athlete. Yeah, straight up tom tomboy. Super tomboy. Yeah. And I remember turning 16 and I ran for uh, the queen of my town. And in Wisconsin, like 
small festival days, you right. know? So that was a big deal, and so I ran for it, and she tried to talk me out of it for three months. <laughs> Cause she, there's no way she wanted to see her daughter. Pageant, her, yeah, pageant style. No pageant, huh? You can't be in pageants. That's not for women. You know, that's not for really strong women. Mm -hmm. She wasn't saying that to me, but I could tell that's what she was implying. The stereotypical vision of what that right. represented. Right. And when I was able to discuss with her why I was doing it, the reason I ended up running was there were girls in that that um, pageant that were really terrible to other girls in our school like very, very vindictive. And so I decided I was gonna run and beat them. Mm. And then they would have to be, you know, they'd have to consider me uh, at a higher level, yeah, you know, yeah. social, it's the social hierarchy thing. And so uh, when she understood why I was, I was running for it, she got the fact that I'm not running for this because I want a crown on my head. Right. And I want to wave at the crowd. There was a social, you know, a socialist aspect to it. Yeah, that, and a change. Right, yeah. I, there needed to be a change of guard and there needed to be uh, respect for all people and that was you know me winning I felt like was putting a respect for all the the, the young girls mm -hmm. that maybe didn't have the money or time or opportunity to do that particular thing mm -hmm. and I ended up winning and one of the girls who I was adamantly against became the second princess ah. and hated it for a year and How I thought you? I've done my work <laughs> right you know so it's Cause I am <laughs> so, the so the femininity thing never came into mind to me but strength in women so I guess that could be a femininity ideal is the strength that women have the strength and you know I I, I I was a tomboy but it was also like you know getting ready for events I also performed and mm -hmm. so you know you wanted to, I always remember my mom going in to do you know speeches in front of thousands of people to, uh, on behalf of human rights and and uh, social justice and before you know you you walk out into that podium I'd be seeing my mom and you know making sure she had that nice lipstick on yeah and, and you know fluffing the hair and 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 kind of like all right let's go burn them you know right, like, right. we say in hip-hop we're about to burn the stage let's burn it out but that was an empowerment and, and, and a strength to say yeah. hey, you know just as much as the guys may be fixing their tie mm -hmm. you know that mascara and that that eyeliner and lip liner was going to be on point and the accessories and that that yeah. that took a strong hold of, of of me and as a young child to to be like man women are queens and, mm -hmm. and we've been rocking these crowns forever mm -hmm. and and my mom placed that um that motion of we still are queens and at times due to what we get faced in society it's just not a matter of our crowns being broken or us throwing that crown off. It just needs to be polished right. sometimes. Oh, that's a good point. So. Yeah, I, uh, I felt a change as I, I mean, I'm sure you felt this too as I got older. Yeah. And it's interesting you talk about like putting the makeup on and that's like an empowerment thing mm -hmm. because for people who have seen me, I, I'm, there's a regular version of me and there's a different version. There's an Amber <laughs> Cleveland a version. A split personality. Right, and there's an Ace version. Most people, oh, they're the same person. But no, they're not really the same person because Ace isn't seen in my nine to five job. Mm -hmm. She doesn't exist there. Mm -hmm. But when Ace is hosting a show, you know that's Ace because she's, her makeup's done, her hair's done. She, right. I usually have a crazy outfit. Oh yeah, I've seen it. That doesn't make sense. Everybody's <laughs> seen it. But it's because I'm, you're playing a part when yeah. you're on that stage. Yeah. And you have to bring the strength through the outfit sometime or the makeup or, you know, mm -hmm. the bolder you are, the more I feel in this scene, the people kind of respect, not even a respect thing, but the more people notice you. Because there's a lot of people in the scene to notice. I think, you know, it's just an aspect of where, how you want to be portrayed as well. And that's, mm -hmm. that's your thing. And like, I think that's what's important with women in general is sharing those stories is what is your thing? Right. What is your, gusto what is that amp um, because in our situations it may be different right. um, some people you know don't host some people aren't artists and rocking in front of few people that may be staying behind the scenes but they show that femininity in other ways right. and yes fashion is one way that mm -hmm. obviously femininity is, is portrayed I look at it as much as you know um, I'm not less feminine if I want to rock my kicks one day <laughs> or rock, you know, three inch heel boots. Right. Um, but like you said, each 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 hat has its place. Right. You know, each 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 medal you rock came from a different battle. Mm -hmm. So it's it's just that key word of strength 
and knowing what you want and how to honor that strength of being a woman. Do you think the men in our scene have to deal with this as much as we do? <laughs> men in the scene could go up with a hoodie and basketball shorts and rap, and please stop doing that. <laughs> um, uh, where as far as if we, I mean, you can do whatever you want, but yeah. I have my own opinion. Right. Um, whereas a woman, if you're not rocking, you know, if, if you didn't have makeup, if on, you didn't have makeup on, you or get you, looked at crazy. You know, you looked at crazy, or, or um, also, I've gone this so many times. I'm a rapper. Like, well, you need to. If you're gonna be singing, you need to do this. You need to do that. And it's like time out. You know. I'm an artist, yeah. so I want to create what I want. I want to spread the message that I want, and that message may not be yours, may not be theirs, but it's mine. And that's also gratifying as a woman to embrace yeah. what men want to reflect that as well, because we learn and we can grow. And we can also inform certain men mm -hmm. who may not see that there is a difference. Right. But come on now. I have been fortunate to rock and been supportive by, you know, by a good collective of men in our community um, for, I think it's just that aspect of saying, you know, I grew up a tomboy, so I wasn't going to take anybody's, right. you know, anybody's stuff saying I couldn't be on that court or that field or mm -hmm. I couldn't be on that stage and rapping. And I think the fact that demographically the percentages of men that were allowed to mm -hmm. gave me an empowerment right. and what I want to reflect over that is like I said if it's me up there and there's not and not any more women on there mm -hmm. I'm not being biased to just represent myself as that woman right. that's right. an opportunity for all of us women to be up there and to figure out how we can break down these barriers because right. it's still happening Oh yeah, it's we we literally we're just having a Facebook conversation. Tessa, mm -hmm. um, who's a mutual friend of ours, is mm -hmm. a, an amazing artist. amazing artist. She did the Ashley Debose cover. Mm -hmm. She uh, did my artwork she for my album. Flyer, so yeah, yeah. She she posted recently, and this is a conversation that gets brought up time and time again about like sound set coming up. Hmm. Now you and I both have mutual friends in Rhyme Sayers, so we're. I'm, I'm a Rhyme Sayers fan. I'm sure you're a Rhyme Sayers fan. We and we know a lot of people that have performed. You've performed at Soundset, so. I performed the first year at Soundset and I performed a few years ago solo and then I performed a few years ago at Villa Rosa. Villa Rosa yeah. So we we're very familiar with the, with the system and what was brought up was the fact that there's always, and I remember Des and I, Desdemona and I having this conversation last year, there's always a real lack of female representation. Mm -hmm. And I think, and this is the, the thing I try to communicate with my, my um, cohorts at Rhyme Sayers, it's not that you guys aren't doing enough. It's the fact that you have the opportunity to bring in some real female national acts, mm -hmm. and it's being ignored. It's it's really not. Yeah, it's it's being. I don't even know if it's being ignored, but it's being downplayed. Like, well, I mean, I say ignored, and everyone can you know can have it. Yeah. You can love. You can hate me for it. Yeah. Um, I see it as being ignored because it's not like this is the first year, right. second year, and I've been very fortunate to have been able to represent the female aspect in the first year. You know, that was very important to me. Um, but I started to realize like, wait, there's so many there's so fresh many, artists, yeah. female artists, female women in hip hop, and not just as MCs, right. but as breakers DJs, and yeah. DJs and graffiti artists. Yeah. And it's almost like, yo, we're in a culture that is, in, in, in it's his 50s, okay? Because I was at Cool Herc's 50th <laughs> birthday, right? So I'm like, it's, it's in his 50s. And to see that we're not being acknowledged in presence. Yeah. And not just on, on stage. The, yeah. Not even just Or the curating. Stage. Yeah. Curating or representing yeah. that angle. I mean, not to say that there's not any women behind the scenes. There is, but it's still that spec. Yeah. And I don't, I don't say that you know. Oh, let's, let's you know, not support it. Let's do this. Right. What I'm saying is, there needs to be more discussions like we're having now. Right. There needs to also be an influence of women who have performed on it, or who haven't had the opportunity to connect with those women who have, and to support one another. Because right. yeah, obviously. 
people are gonna say, well, Maria Issa, Desmond, Odessa, you know, Lizzo, all yeah. these are, they've done it before, but what about us? And it's yeah. like, well, all of those women in that, in that, what I said, we support one another. Exactly. Somehow or way, we're, we support one another. Right. And we need to build the movement from the women in order to show them this is what it is. B-Girl B, 10 years ago, was a very great example of that in, in the hip hop community. Um, you know, five wonderful, beautiful, intelligent women came together, mm -hmm. put their resources, and tried to, and, and did develop one of, of a historical groundbreaking yeah. internationally. Yeah, it was very and, international. And, and focused on offering opportunities to, at myself, I was, you know, 18 mm -hmm. when, I, I w when it started and I was able to perform. And that gave me a pedestal to be heard right. by not just women, but men as well. Right. And... I think, I think really the leadership, if they really, really care yeah. about the feminist movement, they really, really care about the women's movement and women in general, mm -hmm. they need to take some of the sponsorship and funding to open those opportunities right. for the next wave or the women that have been there. Well, and, and this is a really good point. The, the issue is we shouldn't be forced into doing a B girl B, right. which is all female focus, there should be a you know this like you're saying this conversation because to me, having a few women on sound set is one thing, but like you said, not having it, female B boy representation. I'm B a female girl, promoter. Yeah. I don't see a female promotion mm -hmm. representation. I've never seen a female Fashion. host outside of Desdemona, no. and she's only rocked the second stage. Mm -hmm. You know, so to me, it's. Someone made the comment, well, if you're not happy with it, throw your own festival. <laughs> I do mm -hmm. throw my own festival because of that. But there's also the flip side, and this is the, I'll play the devil's advocate to rhyme sayers. In the Twin Cities, specifically, it's difficult to have, because like you were saying earlier about the percentages, mm -hmm. there are more men than there are females. And what I have found being a female promoter because I will active, I actively go out mm -hmm. and search out females and new female talent, is that females tend to do this. It's a very 1950s thing. Females do spoken word, men do rap. Hmm. It, to me, it always felt like a 1950s, like men go to work, women in the kitchen. Hmm. That's how that dynamic felt to me. And I would try and convince female spoken word artists to, to rap. I'm like, you're basically rapping without a beat. Now let me show you how to to do a beat. Spoken word, but that's another thing. It's not. I don't just see it in hip hop. I see it in all. I see it in all cultures. Yeah. I mean, he, coming from a bomba culture, you know, it's great to see. Like my generation was mentored by strong leadership of women mm -hmm. who started forming all bomba groups, and girls were allowed to drum and. And, and repical and 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 so I, I see it in in so many ways oh, yeah. and the determination of us being able to speak up and saying we don't feel comfortable right. we don't feel comfortable um, is what needs to take place right. we need to voice our opinions and you know, not be shut down. Some people are like man, you shouldn't talk too much, yeah. Maria, because then if you, you say that, booked. then they won't book you. Yeah. And, then I don't want them to book right. me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I, I'm like, obviously, if you can't have a reasoning and see yeah. what the facts are, yeah. then we ain't gonna have a solid foundation. Right, right. And because um, no conversation is happening at that point. That's just them no, shutting down because they're, they're they're taking a defensive stance. And I mean, we're speaking in the hypothetical here, mm -hmm. but I mean, like, yeah. yo, I, I, and I mean, going off of like. It's not just you know sound set like awesome. Yes, we, no. we we go to sound set. You know I've been I think majority of the years I've I've attended. I've probably missed a few, um, but I get respect from people who see me there, mm -hmm. um, in, in the crowd and and some of the artists who may not recognize that. You know you can see the tension on it. Mm -hmm. You can feel that and. I just go in there and any festival, any place of a workplace, knowing, like I said, it's polishing your crown. It's demanding yep. that respect. Exactly. And it's keep moving, it's keep working so that they credit you. I remember some, and there was, this is important too, if there is women that are working there, that they are strong supporters and advocate to mm -hmm. allow us sisters to get involved yeah. as well. And I would agree with that. I mean, I, Esther, 
is a particular mm-hmm. example for Rhyme Sayers with me because Esther's always been a big help. She mm-hmm. doesn't, might not directly work with Rhyme Sayers, but as a vendor, mm-hmm. has always been the, the biggest support. I haven't ever felt any support of a woman in in that awesome. in that background other than the artists that have been booked. Honestly, I can say that. Yeah, I can honestly say that. So I have emails. There's. There- <laughs> I got proof. There's definitely, but I love, and you know, and we grow yeah. from love, and it's a community, and it's about building, learning, and facing yeah. and reflecting upon some of our and work. Impro- so. Everything can be improved, mm-hmm. always. After throwing that festival last year, I learned Girl, that. Girl, so no doubt.
yapa, otra planeta. But you wanna smack it like a chancleta. Body from the cold on the mic, le meta. Game is varsity with many letters. He cute, he but oh, but a nice soul. Met him the other night at the last show. He said, Nana, come on, let's bounce and roll. Had a charm and smile, but I wasn't so. Call me Janet Jackson, I'm in control. Give him the news, primer impacto. Maria likes him built, but he was flaco. Like Navaja, telling me about Africa, like Bombada. Dance for a spinning, like the Lombada. Must have been the sangria, santeria, got me buzzed. Goo goo gaga, lady, senorita with the roots to take you on a quest like Johnny. For real, no funny. Making moves like Sunny. Black, brown, fist, pounds, violent pigs and siren sounds. He's trapped with the sounds from the tribal grounds and snap when the names are mispronounced. Found is what I am, lost nunca. If they ask you for my name, tell them Aruga, Aruga. Sound set behind. I think we should move forward. Yes. Us in hip hop, specifically women in hip hop, how do you feel as a female in hip hop? I know that's broad, but how do you feel? Like, what is your feeling as a female in hip hop? Um, feels great. It feels like an honor to be a woman in hip hop. The legacy of hip hop, obviously, as every movement created by woman, <laughs> um, we tend to forget a lot of the representation because obviously just like any other background is is male dominated but nah we have you know Sylvia Robinson with 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 Rapper's Delight and Sugar Sugar Hill Records we have Rosie Perez is the first hip hop choreographer we have you know the Roxanne Roxanne Wars we date that and now he's gonna be like oh yeah you're gonna go back into that and only love and queen you know but yeah. yes yeah. because bam we heavy hidden back mm -hmm. you know within the 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 inception into now we're heavy hitting now yeah. we've got hip-hop radio shows that are led by women mm -hmm. we have women that are curating walls from south africa to queens new york mm -hmm. to um I mean, your own block. In my block, in my community, I mean, I, there's not just a handful of women. We've got books full of women in hip hop. Mm -hmm. You know, shout out to the Tish Jones, to the Dessa, to the Desdemonas, to the new ladies that are hitting the scene and taking it international. Yeah. You know, let's all let's all celebrate the the girl party. Let's celebrate when we see a woman, regardless if it's it's maybe not be your type of you know tea, your type of music. Mm -hmm. But when there is a female that is represented and that is that is respecting themselves, mm -hmm. that's what we have to highlight. So me being a woman in hip hop. Highlight the respect and embrace the other women around you because that's the language that we speak. Right. You know, that reminds me, you talking about embracing other. So Maria and I had done a, I used to do these series of shows called uh, The Ladies First. Yes. And so they were all female shows with a female DJ. I was the female host and the female promoter. And it was 100% female, except for Pablo. Pablo, and he's a great feminist. <laughs> Pablo, he supports the he woman. might be more of a feminist than I. So, <laughs> so Pablo gets a pass because it was actually a, a collaborate, collaboration between the two of us. But the second show that I did, I believe you were headlining it, and I brought in Sweets P mm -hmm. for the first time. And Sweets P, for those of you who don't know, is a, um, a female in the GLBT scene who is a rapper, and she's very, very aggressive. And I just liked her. I liked her mm -hmm. sound. And I put her on... You know, Sweet sight unseen. I've seen like a video. I've never She's seen her G. live. And so I put her on the, the event. And I, I don't remember who else was on that lineup. Maybe B Dot? B Dot, the Linus, Linus and you. Simone, the yes, on the tables. And so I put, Angel. So I had the, this incredible lineup and sweets on there. And I remember um, someone saying to me, you know, is this a good idea? It, you know, she, she doesn't sound like the rest of the people on here. So that's the point. Yeah. I want someone that doesn't sound. I want someone individuality. We didn't know. Right. And she's aggressive and crazy and 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 then about a year later, maybe 2 years later, she was throwing her album release mm -hmm. and said um 
she said, oh, I want you to host it. And so I hosted it. It was the most incredible thing I've ever seen. There was, Sweets is a very tiny person. She's about <laughs> five feet tall, and she was rocking on stage. And all these men get on stage behind her and start rapping her lyrics. And I thought, this is incredible. Like, I've never seen a female, mm -hmm. and all these men got behind her and started rapping her lyrics. And then the crowd was all women and that she was rapping to. It was the most crazy dynamic I would ever seen on a show. And I thought, that I, this wouldn't have happened if I wouldn't have taken the chance to get to know a new artist. And I think that can happen in our scene sometimes. Like, there's this, um, we talk about there's a community, mm -hmm. and there's, there's a lot of females that share with each other. But I think a problem in feminism or in female circles is a competition thing that mm -hmm. happens. And I remember uh, I was watching this uh, movie called Punk Singer by Kathleen Hanna, or it's featuring Kathleen Hanna from Bikini Kill. And she's talking about how she was doing an interview, and this was during the PJ Harvey t days. She was talking about when Courtney Love had attacked her at a show, and she's like, I'm not going to say anything because the media is always trying to get women to slag off on another woman mm -hmm. in order to create this. You know, the drama and the, right. the novella, the, 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 the reality, what the reality and it's show, you know, uh, it's something we spark. deal with constantly. Yeah, the still. ratchetness. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's what, and I can't stand that word ratchetness because <laughs> I'm far beyond, uh, don't get me ratchet, right? right? But uh, um, that's what it is, is, is allowing an opportunity. Mm -hmm regardless if it's with hip hop and an MC or, you know, it's just a young sister who may want an opportunity to be, uh, you know, working in public relations or right. uh, in the medical field. Right. And uh, just respecting the dignity of a human aspiration. Right. But I don't, this. I've never understood this female on female, like the, the pity to us against each other. Yeah. I think that's the most detrimental to the feminist cause. Slash them out. Right. I, what I'd say is it's like, okay, you know, the sisters that I work with, obviously you're one of them, you know, um, it's, we're all building and we're all supporting, even if it's not every day, but if it's just, hey, can you, you know, share this post on a Facebook or, you know, can you come, I'd like you to be a part of my panel or, right. I'd like you to see my new design. And right. all of those things are actions, right. taking action. And there's a taking action part. And then there's, like you said, the, 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 the ratchetness part. If women could get rid of that. That competition, that competitiveness. That competitiveness that the man has placed yeah, in our world. It's not a healthy competition. Then we would see a lot of growth. Yes and a lot of transformation starting here in our, own, in our own communities. Yeah. I've seen, you know, a big mentor of mine, um, La Tere, out of Chicago, wonderful woman's activist and rapper. She is the founder of uh, the Women's Hip Hop Kitchen. Um, they just celebrated, I think, I wanted their, their seventh year, their eighth year, and it's all women in hip hop and young girls, and the focus is getting together and educating our young women on health, yep. on taking care of themselves, on beauty and self-esteem. Those are the battles that every woman, every young girl fights. It's placed even heavily because of the man. Mm -hmm. We allow that to suffocate us. If we place ourselves in, in a room full of women who have that oxygen mm -hmm. to allow all of us to breathe together and celebrate one another and continue to fight amongst each other, that's where it is. That's where the change is happening within the feminist movement, yeah. is that we don't have time for this, 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 and this, and that. Yeah. That's now being placed in a different category, yeah. the ratchetness category. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're ready to attack, and the people who move forward you see that those are the pe those are the women. The women who move forward are the women that are collaborating and that are celebrating that are everyone. A, a healthy network. Yeah. No, Punto. I'm with you on that. Yeah. So this kind of brings up the idea. I mean, I'm an educator. I know you're an educator as well. I especially work in my specialty and my doctorate is hip hop as a shared cultural language in education. And when I come into a classroom talking about hip hop, I always know the first thing I have to overcome is the gangster, I always call it the gangster aspect. Because mm -hmm. when you say the words hip hop in a predominantly white 
mm-hmm. education system, oh, yeah. they think gangster right away. Right. They, don't, they don't think lyrically or, or how we think about hip hop as the four elements and things like that. But um, we do have to fight against misogyny mm-hmm. in hip hop. I mean, it's, it's something that's there. We all know it. It happens from a female side. It happens from a male side. And so I always get asked that, especially when these conversations about feminism mm-hmm. comes up. They're like, well, how can you call yourself a feminist, but you listen to, you know, Ice Cube from 80, 89, or you know what I mean? Or Muja Messiah. Yeah, you listen to Muja <laughs> Messiah. You know, like, how could you possibly be both of these things? And so my question is, how do you feel about the misogyny that's predominant and prevalent within hip hop? I think that there is a story. You know, and being, I'm, I'm in a group, you know, Villa Rosa, Muja Messiah, the B-boy, D-boy, mm-hmm. you know, everybody at first was, how could you be in, in, in a group with that person who talks? I'm like, first of all, storytelling and they're writers and they speak on behalf of what is happening. And I have always been placed in a, in, in a pedestal of respect when working with the men that I work with, mm-hmm. who may have these certain songs that, you know, oh, there goes the B word. Mm-hmm or their goals, you know, them talking about it. It's like, well, they're talking about it because it's happening. Right. And their re- writing is on reflecting it. Mm-hmm. You're in a position to demand how you want to be treated. Right. You're in a position to represent what you want other people to listen to. Um, you can't change somebody's momentum of how they want to describe you can't say oh well, you can't do that yeah because everyone has their own ability to yeah. create yeah. however you can educate and you can explain on why you feel this is an issue i work with several hip-hop artists and men that are going to be like you ain't going to want to listen marie ain't going to want to listen to this one this is sexist right hold up. Know it. Hold, up, hold up hold up hold up no i want to yeah. listen to it because yeah. are you feeling guilty yeah, are why, you the sexist? Yeah. Are you uh, proving this mm-hmm. message? Or are you explaining right. what's going on? Yeah, like, are you actually being a lyricist in this? I think where, where people get a bad taste in their mouth about misogyny and hip hop is like the real, I always call it the, the, the dirty South music. Like mm-hmm. when you're talking about money and clothes and cars and mm-hmm. women as objects and things like that. And people want to know, you know, how can you enjoy that? I can enjoy it just like the next person. I can enjoy also Nicki Minaj getting mm-hmm. up and talking. She's pretty grimy when mm-hmm. she has some of her, her I mean, bees in a trap. She's <laughs> not talking about, you know, a hive and going to right. force some honey. Right. That's not what she's talking about right. in that song. And that's where I think, like you're saying, education and explanation comes into it. Like I work with the middle school population and they came in singing bees in the trap one day. And I broke down, do you know what this is? Mm-hmm. And literally explained every lyric in that song to him. So now they have a better, you know, a more un- wide understanding of what it is that they're listening to and what's coming out of their mouth. And is it appropriate or is it not appropriate? And I think that's how you can enjoy that kind of music. But at the same, th- same breath, you and I are, both have tons of male friends in the hip hop community. Mm-hmm. I know how they treat women. So just because they're saying certain things doesn't mean, you know, it's a persona almost. Well, and it's all it's also like, woman, you get to, I always do the, this, like, you're going to talk about what I'm talking about. I'm going to flip it on you. Exactly. And not to say, well, well, that doesn't make it. No. As a battle rapper growing up, as a battle rapper, I already knew what was coming at me. Right. When I was in there looking, I, I, I was in New York, and it was like five guys from Brooklyn, two from Queens, another brother from Staten Island, one uptown. I'm going, okay, I got five guys to knock out today. Gotta I got to get to five. They're all going to talk about the P, yeah. <laughs> the B. Yeah. The, it's all coming. It's all coming yeah. at me. Um, I'm going to flip it at them. Yeah. And that's another recollect, recollection of it. It's like flip it at them. Yeah. Shh. What is it? You know, uh, that is the 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 role, the the the, the I'm going to the pimpette vibe. You know, it's like ain't nobody pimping me. Right, right, right. <laughs> There's nobody you should be pimping well, I mean, each other but that, yourself. That's the basis of language. Pimp the word. That's the basis of language in hip hop is rock, rocking the dozens, and the dozens doesn't matter if you're a man or a female. Right. It's how do you know how to flip what they're gonna say to you back to them? Right. And how good are you at it? 
You right. know what I mean? Some people have to use the misogyny. And to me, to me, misogyny, I've always viewed it sort of comically, especially like in real, like we were talking about ratchet, mm -hmm. ratchet music. I view it comically because obviously you're not lyrically skilled enough to come up with something better to say, so this is what you gotta say sometimes. Some people are like that. Like Lil Jon, when he says something on an album. I mean, and, 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 and but that's their market, yep, and you know, and that appeals, gotta, and you honest. can't, they have an audience, and that's another, like, I did a song a few years ago, and I had to write music for the Bad Girls Club and the Kardashian show, and we did a video that they had put out, and it was uh, for Street by, uh, Street Love, and um, we I did the American Beauty scene, and people were like, oh, I had so many, like, fans hitting me up, they were like, I can't believe you do that. Why would you show? And I was like, time out. I worked out for my body. This is what, how, this is my. I don't know what they're talking about. I'm, I was impressed. I'm like, this is tasteful. Yeah. Um, and I am in a room being respect, respected. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I'm working with people who are seeing this vision. I'm an actress. There may be scenes that people aren't going to acquire to being right. represented. It's like, well, I'm acting, right. and this does happen. Yeah. You know, so there's a lot of times where people have their own persona and their vision of who they want to see you right. be or oh, what you are. Yeah. They have perceptions yeah. of it, you know, and, and it's like, great. Have those perceptions, but at the same time recognize that you don't have to like everything. Right. You know, and I would like for you, I want, I'm not saying, I'm not trying to lose those fans who may be like, right. I don't see myself being less of a stronger woman because I did that. And that's what I had to explain. And, um, and, and, and it's a business and it's an industry at the same time. Right. Sure, you have the culture, then you have the industry. Right. And you set morals at as, as an artist and values. Yeah. So it's, it's to that extent, people are always gonna have something to critique, obviously. Yeah. And if you can't handle the heat, then stay out the kitchen, you know? Um, but at the same time, it just starts out with, as a woman, having respect for yourself and right. you setting up those values, because you know what it is. Yeah, I always point out, just because I know all the lyrics to Easy Does It, doesn't make me less of a woman. Right. You know? <laughs> if anything, it should make me more impressive. Thank you. Somebody. Thank so. you. Well, let's talk a little bit about influences in hip-hop just real quick you, you you touched on some of the old school cats which is usually what i do mm -hmm. and i know what you're saying people always blast us out but like right now who do you think is one of the most influential or who has been influential to you especially since this is a career for you influential like within my career move i mean obviously it starts within the movement of the human rights movement and social justice. So obviously I was raised by my mother who let me know those powerful women that were in that, that, that continue to live and their legacies are, are now being um, pushed and encouraged for us to educate in our generations. And so, I mean, it starts off obviously um, both women and men, you know, I've been, I, I love hip hop. I grew up as a baby in hip hop and my first memory was whoa, there's a Puerto Rican girl who looks like me and has an accent like my family and is on TV and in movies and, you know, shout out to Rosie and, and was degraded by agencies because they told her you can't audition for those roles and, you know, she knocked down those barriers for saying, I'm not going to take those roles, right. you know, and um, obviously, you know, Rosie, obviously there is a movement of the scene and educators like the Rocksteady crew Pop Master Fable, who, yes, is an artist, a dancer, but is an educator and shows the values of what it is important to talk about who we are, our history, and why it's important to feed it to these youth. Yeah. Um, mentorship locally here, I mean, I look up to my mom a lot, you know. I always, is that first person, that woman, I want, I, even if it's, there's differences, you always want to make your mom happy. Yeah. And I've been fortunate and blessed to be uh, a, a woman who has had that that role model for me, um, and uh, but locally the Sharon Sales Beltons, the Robin Hickmans, you know the the Sand of, Sandy Vargas is these women that knock down and continue, and now is like 
baby girl, what you gonna do about it? You know, yeah, oh yeah, you're going through that? Uh-huh, well, yeah. <laughs> we got a few of those. Yeah. How are you gonna keep it moving? Yeah. Um, and then obviously there's mentors in the men that are men as well. You know, you have uh, um, Felipe Quali, my bro, who is a feminist, who's always been right there behind me. Mm -hmm. And even even though we have to prove those marks, because I'm going I'm to put him on blast because mm -hmm. <laughs> he's my bro. Yeah. But like my first show with them, where I was performing to Maria Issa, they thought I was going to be doing covers. Mm -hmm. I thought I was going to be doing like Alicia Key covers and Lauryn Hill covers, which nothing, that ain't bad. But I'm like, I got my own album right. that I've been writing yeah. and I'm going to rap. Yeah. And I did it. And they at first were like, don't. And I did it. And the crowd responded and th and then it, it's been moving ever since, yeah. you know. So but I recognize that as him saying, like, I didn't want to discourage you. I wanted yeah. you to prove it. Yeah. And because I have to be hard on you yeah. because you are a young girl and I have a daughter. And he knows if somebody tells you no, you're going to be like. He knows it because <laughs> he, you know, him and my brother, you know, Harrell Perez, I love, it's my fan, these strong, strong supporters of women mm -hmm. that aren't necessarily women. They're right. men too. And that's what we have to recognize yeah. that the feminist movement isn't just women. Yeah. And women have to accept that and open that up as well. You know, um, yeah, we need to have our tea time. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But they need to be invited into the forum as well um, because we need we need their backing. Right. So it, it is that those 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 figures, those role models that are not just doing what they do to be comfortable. Mm -hmm. They're not stopping right. what they do so that we can all see ourselves comfortable yeah. and safe. I dig that. Like I share a lot of the same people with you. I yes. mean, Robin Hickman's been a huge. I think for people, Deanna Cumming. I, yeah. I mean, we can keep going. I feel like <laughs> if people don't know who Robin Hickman is, she's one of those people to seek out because she, first of all, she makes you feel incredible. Like I've never met another individual in my life, woman or man, who the second you see them, they make you feel better about just physically seeing them. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, she, she, she gives that presence, and I think maybe only my mother has ever done that for me outside of Miss Hickman. And then there's just, yeah, there's there's so many people, and I like that you said men are important. I remember at that uh, ladies' first event, I made the comment because I looked around the scene, and it was a ton of men from the scene mm -hmm. there supporting us, and I thought, thank you. Thank you for coming. I probably harassed a few people or two. I mean, that's what I do. Mm -hmm. That's why I get paid what I get paid. Right. So, but that the, that they actually came out because so often we can be discounted um, because it's an all-female lineup. Like so many times as a female promoter, I've heard an all-female lineup wouldn't work, you know, because it's not done. But like you're saying, majority. somebody tells me something's not going to work, yeah. I'm going to make it work. Yeah. And I'm, I'm in the same boat with you. I do want to have see yeah. it. You got to see it. Yeah, you do have to My see mom it. always told me like, "Baby, you got to see it." You see it? I mean, and those are still words that yeah. I have to be reminded to today, you know, yeah. like you have to be cocky about it. You know, it too. you got to hold your guard and and that that's where it is. We have a lot of great mentors that have taught us yeah. to hold our guard. My aunt Mila, you know, um go in and show them what you do and 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 yeah, use what you have because it's yours. That's a good point. Use what you have yeah. because it's yours. Yeah. And don't let anybody degrade you because people, of that. Because people will bring up the idea of sex appeal. Well, yeah. Sex, I mean, we all know sex sells. It's, but is sex better than violence or is violence better than sex? You know, it's like, yeah. what are you going with? So, I mean, that's a whole nother discussion. Yeah, it's a whole but, other discussion. But, you know, yeah, shout out. And, shout, and the business owners like yourselves and, you know, ourselves that, that, that we take pride in those tasks and you know that's something that yeah that's maya maya santa maria you know another great woman latina who who has done so much and sometimes our own our own mentors are like mija careful like i've been there and then i'm like well yeah even more right that i have to do it right, right. because you taught me how to do yeah. that and it's like you're right i got you you know and it's yeah. it's it's having those conversations and not forgetting one who gave us those opportunities right to start that's our own great, opportunities. That's a great point. The women that have come before, men that have come before. Yes, who yeah. built those curriculums. Yeah. And how do we continue that legacy with our 
momentum because we gonna do that till the clock stops. Right. And if not, then what we here for? Right, exactly. Now, I'm gonna bring up one last topic that I think we, we discussed this before and we've had many discussions about this. You can see it's the only thing that I'm showing on my page right now. Something that is misinterpreted about females in the hip hop scene. Specifically, you and I have both encountered this, is that people see females in the hip hop scene and what's the first thing they think of? Groupie love. Groupie love. <laughs> now here's a, a thing I think every scene, right? you might not know about me, and I don't know if a lot of people know, I came from rock. I came from punk and rock. Mm -hmm. I worked for 93X. Mm -hmm. I've, you know, I've been, in the, I, I started in the rock scene. Mm -hmm. And groupies is like ingrained into that scene to a strange degree. Like it's, you know, the, I think it has a lot to do with the 80s hair band thing. And like, <laughs> you know, your kiss and all that. And that is, you want to talk about a male dominated scene. Rock is a male dominated every, scene. I mean, every, every scene, scene. It, I mean, Latin music, uh, from salsa everyone, to- uh, Everyone has it. The punk scene's a yeah, male dominated yeah, scene. So, I don't know any scene that isn't male, male dominant dominated. unless it's the woman scene. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's a great point, the woman scene. We might yeah. have to start that. Okay, yeah. New, a new culture. The, wo the, well, the woman scene. Here at the woman scene. Mm. But I might sell a bunch of hip hop stuff though, just for that. The groupies. groupies. Groupies are there. And you know, I, I've had some interesting. I got I got groupies. What up, yeah. groupies? <laughs> Shout out to all of them. You know, so I love baby. I wish I had some groupies. No, I'm just, it's, <laughs> it's, it's humble yourself, Maria. But it's, um, it's, that first stereo, I, I mean, we get it all the time. It's like, I remember rapping backstage, yeah. going backstage at First Avenue to get ready to do a, a show. And there's all these cipher, guys yeah. and, and it's not even just hip hop, it's there's rock. It's like all these different bands and do a show. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're trying to pass your stuff and people just ignore you or they say hi to the guy in your group. Right. Get it all the time. Yeah. Oh, what's up? What's up? You know, and and um, then they pay no acknowledgement to you. But as mm -hmm. soon as you get off stage, I'll send you the dopest thing that hit that. They're thing. like, yo, ma, let me get you on a track. Or, you know, that was great. And we like to sign. It's like, cool. Thank you. Awesome. Right. Yeah. Acknowledgement. However, I'm going to tell you that I just walked in here yeah. 30 minutes ago yeah. and you acted like there was nobody in the room. Right. One. Or you acted like, mama, let me get your number. Yeah. Two. Or. I ain't giving you my number. Well, why are you back here then? Right. You know, that that's that stereotypical vibe. End it. Stop it. We're here. We're equal. Let's go. Yeah. And, you know, women recognize that that's a stereotype. Yeah. And statistically, unfortunately, those percentages are there to show that yeah. that is happening. Yeah, that is happen. there. And that's but the thing. We're not saying value yourself. Happen. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying, hey man, if you going to do, hey, I am not one to judge anybody, and I cannot tell anybody what to do. But I can advise, I can advise that you are worthy, right? And you are to be treated and demand that respect. And if not, if you don't feel, you got to feel comfortable. So it's all about who, it's also about acknowledging and recognizing, like if there's a woman there that I feel that, you know, oh, sister girl, man, here, here it goes again, you know? Mm -hmm. Ask that, conversate with that young woman. Yeah. That woman has a strength that maybe you don't have, right. and you have a strength that maybe she doesn't have, and that yeah. goes for everything in general. Women need to communicate, women need to learn, yeah. women need to grow, women need to build, whether you are you know, straight, whether you are lesbian, whether you are transgender. We all have to talk about maybe our weaknesses yeah. and our strengths at the we same time. We have to talk with, not 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 behind. Not that's behind, that, that's and that's the problem always throw the bochinche out, throw the cheap man. I think that's something that me and Ace is so cool with, and the sisters that are in our circles, because yeah. it's like, look, I don't have time for that. Yeah. You don't have time for that. We got an issue. Let's conversate yeah, it, it and let's move forward. Yeah. Because if we we don't, then we're falling right. and, um, and and we're not showing the strength of what it is to right. be that queen. Well, and I, I mentor quite a few young women coming up and, and this is just something that happens when you've been in a scene for a long time and you become the old lady in the scene real quick, you become a mentor to, to, to women coming up and as a promoter, I don't know if this is the same with artists, 
promoters, we have a hard time. Um, they assume we sleep with everybody. <laughs> they assume I get a lineup because I've slept right. with 90% of that lineup. Yeah. First of all, I don't have the time. <laughs> I don't know who has the time. It's not me. Yeah. Um, second of all, I don't have the interest in that. And people know where, where I stand on on how my shows, I'm a very professional person when it comes to my show. I'm a stickler. I'm what you call me, a drill sergeant. I'm a drill, drill sergeant. sergeant when it comes to my shows. And it took a long time to understand at the beginning about respect. Um, first of all, whether you're a female or male in this scene, you're not getting it. You're not mm -hmm. getting it. It's not something that's just handed over to you. You gotta earn it. You right. have to earn your respect and you have to earn your time in. So I get a little irritated with people that try to make quick moves into the scene and quick moves can sometimes be interpreted as groupy moves hmm. and quick moves really cost your reputation for the in the long run and it's something i find very frustrating because there there are people i've mentored coming up and i see them quick move and then wonder how they fell hmm. you know what i'm saying so it's and I'm, that's another thing it's like yo any moon that you what, what, like you always have to think 10 years in the in the future and i know it's hard to do when you're in your early 20s I wasn't thinking in the future. I was just thinking, what's the next day hold? Like you know, and sometimes we can be naive to fall into cer certain, you know, roles. Roles yeah. or and um and obviously, you know, I I was eighteen. I, I started performing at sixteen in the scene, but at eighteen, I started taking more of a determination of where I wanted to be and see. Mm -hmm. And I was rapping with a, a, a all boy crew out of the West Side. You know, when we started and. I started recognizing like, whoa, you know, I need to do my own thing right. um, because obviously y'all is my brothers and my fam, but I feel like I can't tolerate some of the things that are going on right. in the studio. Right. Like you said, the groupie thing. Yeah, girls the, and and, like and it's interesting because, you know, I've, I've heard so many different angles of, of different stories from different women in hip hop mm -hmm. and the ones that are where they are and that are successful are the ones that have a motive yeah. of going in and attacking their mission right. to a, be on top. You have a very strong vision. And right. If you don't have a strong vision, this industry eats you it alive. It eats your life. My mama used to tell me I play ball. I, I used to play basketball growing up with my brothers, and if I fell and ran in crying, you know, she would yeah. she'd look at me and be like, "What you gonna do about it?" Right. You chose to go out there. They're boys. They're older than you. They're rough. Yep. Go, go do something about it. Yep. And my thought was, well, should I stop? And I, if I stop, I don't get hurt no more. Or should I keep going and learn how to defend myself and learn how to get that ball in that basket without them hurting? Yes, you know. Right so I think you just pinned down the crux of all females. Yeah. We all have that 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 dichotomy at some point in our life, and sometimes multiple mm -hmm. times in our life. Where do I? Take the easy way, right, and the safe way, and just stay. Or do out, I give up? Lane, or nah. do I jump in the deep end and just get myself dirty? The the unfortunate part, and I think this is where um, some women kind of lose it, is we have strong backings. I not every woman has a strong. And backing. that's important. And it's a huge. It's. To, I, I couldn't say this enough to my students. If you don't have a strong backing in your family, mm -hmm. find a strong Find backing. it. Find that family. Right. Find, find those people that are going to surround you. I'm surrounded by artists that want us to grow right. individually, together, supportive. Even if we don't see each other on a daily basis, I know that there's a cup of coffee going on. We're going to talk for three hours. Who's the and first it's... person I called on my vacation? You. I'm out, <laughs> she I'm, hollered at me. I'm in Puerto Rico, and I'm like, this is Maria's people. I'm going to yeah. call Maria. That's the first person. I, I didn't even call my mother first. Don't. If my mother sees this, I called <laughs> you first. But, you know, you, you have to have these strong people around you, and it's that whole, you know, you don't get to choose your family, mm -hmm. but you get to choose your friends. I came to the Twin Cities hip-hop community in a decade ago, and I'm not from here, and I came and built a family. Like, my family's not here. Mm -hmm. My real family's not here. Mm -hmm. And I built this community around me. I shouldn't even say I built it. They were already there. Mm -hmm. But I surrounded myself with the most You engaged people, in, right? in, in a community. And it's constantly building and changing, and, you know, you fight with people. And I fight with people just like they're my family. And so. respecting. It's also yeah. that, 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 like, you know, it's interesting because... I used to feel at a time as a woman like, oh, I have to, I have to, you know, 
I have to show this person respect even if they did they didn't respect me on this level right. because they're here and I had to be like no I don't right I gotta do me right and I have to be able to have a, a wise reflection of who that me is exactly. and each woman needs to do that right. and I had such a great conversation with Lydia Liza the other day I was chilling at her house from Bomba de Luz cool 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 girl and uh, you know we never done music together we've been in the same circles and she said something that was really cool to me and saying like yo you know you're my woman crush Wednesday <laughs> you're my favorite rapper and telling her boyfriend, this is dope. And and to me, like that felt all of the times where I've been degraded by a man in this genre. Secondly, um, that I trumped it. That 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 that, that <laughs> kicks it into a whole nother ball field. Yeah. Because some of those same men are the same people that are in our community. Yeah. And maybe you know put this and on the record. Mm -hmm. You know, they have to hear what you have to say and sometimes it takes years for them to take a listen yeah um but speak up don't be the don't be the bill cosby victims yeah <laughs> don't put your Why days you gotta bring bill up? no i'm but saying on, right on the record don't <laughs> no speak up and that's what women have to do regardless yeah. of what it is i'm not saying i'm not saying what i, I feel you about that but yeah. speak up yeah. because your time might not come if you don't right and time is not to be wasted. And there's young women who have been going through issues that maybe you've been through before. Right. Or there's older women that have gone through issues that you're going through right now. Right. If we don't talk, we don't if we them. hold it up, and our health goes to a whole different pattern. Right. It's all about being healthy. And that's what it is with the women. We yeah. need to fight for those rights still to this day. Yeah. Beyond, and if you gotta write a song in hip hop, if you gotta do it educating your youth and your class, your young women and your young brothers, how they need to be treating their, yeah. their, their, their significant others or their sisters, it's important that that health, that health topic is the first. Right. Mental, physical, and spiritually, yeah. the woman's strength is built on those three values. Yeah, I feel you on that. My thing has always been a, a respect, having a respect. And um, my biggest, it's the, only, it's the number one rule in all my classrooms. And it's also the thing that I tell students coming up. If I respect you, I expect you to respect me. And the, the biggest thing, the, the, the hugest takeaway I would, I would give to anybody watching this, discussing this, I started my company respecting the artists. Yes, you did. And I was gonna pay artists, even if it made me the brokest promoter in mm -hmm. history, which it pretty much did. But I also then was able to get respect back. And I say that telling my students, I did it without the expectation that I would receive. Always give without the expectation that you receive. And it's like you're saying, open a line of communication, talk with people, keep things open, keep it light, but really discuss the real issue. Because otherwise, nothing's gonna get completed. Nothing's gonna get accomplished. No, yeah. What did you, you say before support. we started? Uh, you can't. You you need to change in order to move. Mm -hmm. You know, without without, With, without change, there's no movement. Exactly. So yeah, it's always about growing and learning, and and also trusting. Yeah. You gotta be able to have a great trust circle, because that that's what allows those bricks to build the pyramid. I think that's a good way to end. Woman to woman, without, without, <laughs> without change, there's no movement. Indeed. Thank you.